Morning class, this is part two of this free cherry painting video. Um, I bet you think I've been busy, don't you? <laughs> but this isn't the uh, finished painting. There we are underneath. This is just to show you the image in the next stage for how we would match the red that we've got in the cherry. So you've got to try and decide when you're looking at your painting or your subject, which pigments are going to be best to do it. So for this red, if we used um, a CAD red, I mean, this is a CAD red, but this is um, a CAD red light, so it's slightly warmer anyway, but you can see how it's quite um, quite orangey. If we have a look at that, it's, it's very orange. I mean, you might be able to use a touch of it in here, and it could be quite handy for uh, some mixtures. So what I might do with that, I might just put a bit over here, we might use later but it's not going to be the the essential paint to use for this we need something that's got more of a purpley undertone so if we look at the, this crimson which is from Windsor and Newton the artist acrylics this is a paint swatch that often on artist quality paints and they're very good because they can show you how the paint looks when it's on top of say black which is always printed on the tube, which just helps you to show its opacity, you know, its coverage. If you look at these two here, you'll see that the cadmium has a lot more coverage than the, the crimson. For painting this, often I'd work in layers and kind of build up layers, so this is going to be quite handy. And when you look at it, you see it's a lot closer, um, just in its raw form, um, than the cadmium red light. To match this colour on here, what I often look at is what's called the local colour. And that is what locally that whole area is. So if you squint your eyes at the picture, you kind of get a general feeling of the tone of that whole area. Not any of the details, not if it goes dark, not any of this colour under here, but just the, the general feeling of it. So for this, if we start with this red, Okay, and this is just this is just exactly that comes from the tube. So we can see it's it's quite it's quite good. This it might even be a bit a bit too strong, a bit too much punch into it. So what we could do is add a little bit of the burnt umber. That's got that nice deep colour. I mean, that's going to be great for, for here in this shadow area. So to start with, I think this will be great to start. We just use that and a tiny bit of the burnt umber and we can start painting it in and try and judge the tones from there. So this is just called a glaze where you have a thin layer of paint that goes over another. It's like trying to have a very thin translucent layer of coloured glass, like a stained glass window effect that you put over objects. So you see how what it does is it, it tones down the burnt umber that we had underneath it, but still lets some of that colour, you know, subtly come through. So you see how when I'm working this, I'm kind of working around it as, you know, as a as a round, you know, I'm kind of as if the you know the light's hitting this middle, and that's where all the attention is going to be. So I'm just trying to build a form, you know. It's essentially just a a, a sphere that you're just trying to model.
So now for the the, the next colour, um, of course if I'm painting I wouldn't be stopping so much in between, I'll be kind of working as one, but you start to see this, this lighter area up here on the cherry. So what we can do is leave some of this as our base colour, and instead of using the white to, to lighten it, I'll show you what happens when you use the white. You see how the white always brings out the, the, the pinky hues? If we have a look at this again. You see how that's gone way off? You know, when you have white on something, um, especially in pinks, it always goes towards blues or you know or purple is. So this this, this isn't isn't going to work for this this mass area of here. So the only other option you've got to lighten it if you haven't got white is you've got to have another pigment that is lighter. So your option is either to use this red that we've got here, which is, goes towards yellow. You know, it's a warmer warmer red, or if you didn't have any of that red you'd use a cadmium yellow light which is a warm yellow which will help to help to warm this up but because we've got a bit of this red here I'm just going to show you the difference between what happens when we have I'll mix a bit more remember that mix was just the crimson a bit of burnt umber Okay, when we have a look at that, we can see that's still way too bright. It's amazing, you know, how that it is so so subtle. This it looks like it's you know a lot brighter um, than it actually is. But this still is great for those highlights. So what we can do is keep some of this down here. Mix some more of this crimson in. I start to see how this is getting um, um, a closer tone to what we're after. So when we look at it, there we can see actually, it's, you know, this still is a bit too, you know, a bit too red. We've got to kind of knock it down a bit. Okay, and that looks great. So bearing in mind that uh, acrylics are always going to dry darker than they first appear, because of this we might add a tiny touch of white, just a little speck on the end. And that will give us a good base. Once we've got a nice base with this red, we can start to add some more details and bring the cherry to more of a finish in the next lesson. Make sure you subscribe above so you don't lose out on the next episode. This is Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School.